Okay, we are live. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon. We're trying a different time this week. Let's see if a different, different set of you. Maybe you're on lunch and you'll be able to join us. But uh, I am. I'm Jillian Policcio. I'm the executive vice president here at New Species. And I'm Aston Farkasen. I'm the founder of New Species and CEO. So. For those of you who haven't heard of us before, we are going to reintroduce new species and what we do. But first, today's the goal of today's video is really to just answer any and all of your questions. So regardless of what we're talking about, please post any questions that you have about new species, about how we help people rebuild their health, about our services, our naturopathic doctors, our products. Anything. Um, or even about your health goals, if there are certain things you aren't concerned about being confidential, feel free to go ahead and, and ask that. Mm -hmm. um, but first, what is New Species? <laughs> so New Species is a natural health company, as we will explain later in the presentation. We have natural, raw, organic, whole food, sounds like a mouthful, mm -hmm. liquid formulas. And there's a reason why each of those is critically important. If you have any questions on why it has to be natural, why it has to be liquid, why it has to be organic, you know, you can, you can give us questions on that as well. But that's what we are. We are a natural health company. We have naturopathic doctors and staff to help you overall with your health end to end. Starting with your, your labs or your blood test results or your CD, CD scans, your MRIs, Whatever medical documents you have, we have NDs, naturopathic doctors on board who can help you. And guess what? Their consultation is for free. So stay tuned. All right. So New Species has, we have five health centers in the U.S. Um, so we are located, our headquarters, which is where we are now, is in Beacon. We're in the Hudson Valley. Um, we this is we also see clients here we have a, a small storefront and, and aston and dr bowman see clients here um, we have a health center in mount vernon new york which is in westchester we are also in elmont new york which is on the border of queens and long island and we're also in in brooklyn in canarsie uh, we are currently relocating our atlanta location but we have been in atlanta now for several years and we also have a location in montego bay jamaica um, which, speaking of that, we will be in Jamaica, Asin and I, um, from March 21st to the 27th, and Asin will be taking appointments the 22nd through the 26th from 12 to 5. So we'll be doing another Facebook Live on Sunday at 2 o'clock. For those of you who have family in Jamaica and you want to ask them to join the Facebook Live to learn about new species and how we help people, we'll be doing a a more generic presentation that day, it, introducing new species and talking in more detail about who we are and what we do. Um, and then if they have any questions, they can ask. And then ideally after that, they can call and book a free consultation with us. But uh, that's where our health centers are located. And at these health centers, we see our clients there and our naturopathic doctors work out of them. So you'll see Dr. McDermott in Brooklyn. She also is in our Elmont office on Saturdays. And Dr. Guy is in our Elmont office all the time. And Aston goes to all of our offices. <laughs> He's everywhere. So. And my schedule is uh, oh, okay. on a Monday, I'm in Elmont. On a Tuesday, I am in Brooklyn. On a Wednesday, I'm in Mount Vernon, and on a Saturday, I'm back in Elmont, but in the morning at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., just for two hours, I am in Mount Vernon because uh, we have a ton of clients in that region, so they need me to be there at least more than just one day. So we can repeat this, you know, the schedules later in the presentation, but that's uh, where we are located, and that's who we are. Right. Hi, Verona. Thank you for joining us. We love having you in our Facebook groups and, and on Facebook and Instagram. You're always supporting us and living the new species and lifestyle. Um, so thank you for constantly sharing with us and with everyone, uh, all the other new species, about how you live your life so naturally. And it's, it's really beautiful to have you part of our, our family. But yes, happy, so Verona says, happy Friday and happy International Women's Day to us. So yes, happy International Women's Day to us. I'll, I'll, I'll take it for sure. 
Um, so thank you, glad to have you here. Please ask any questions that you'd like to today. If you have any. Right. So we wanted to talk about today. So we figured until more specific questions come in, we uh, something this comes up all the time, but uh, it, a particular client's case this week made it more prominent. And Asin, we talked about it on the radio segments that we have. So Asin thought that it would be a good thing to talk about here as well regarding using medication. But first of all, yeah. we want to tell you that there are two medications that are under recall by the FDA. These are medications uh, for high blood pressure. So those of you who are taking this medication, if you have family members or friends taking this medication, you should you know, get them to go back to their primary care to ask questions about these two medications. The first one is Valsartan. It was recalled by the FDA last year or, or two years ago. And up to recently, I have talked to clients of, over the last few weeks who are still taking Valsartan. They haven't gotten to their doctors. So this particular drug, Valsartan, it's known to have carcinogen, which means that it can cause cancer and it's recalled by the FDA. So again, those of you who have family members who are taking uh, blood pressure medication or if they have high blood pressure, you may not know what medication they're taking, you should talk with them about it so they can go back to their primary care and you know, get some clarity uh, on Valsartan. The second one is Losartan. Um, and this is more recent, just last week, over the last two weeks, uh, it was in the media again, the FDA has recalled Losartan because it, known to have carcinogen, meaning that it can cause cancer. So again, if you have friends, family members, co-workers, neighbors who have high blood pressure, you should, you know, reach out to them and let them, you know, know they should go back to their primary care to get clarity on these two medications. So we're just telling you what we have seen in the media, but they need to go to their doctors to get clarity and they should do it immediately. Right. So the topic of medication is always is a big thing that comes up for us. So most of our clients, and, and by the way, hi, Roma. Thank you for joining. Um, again, if you have any question at all, regardless of what we're talking about, please go ahead and, and, and ask it in the chat. So for medication, this comes up all the time, and that's why we have naturopathic doctors on our staff, because most of our clients, when they first come to us, they usually are already diagnosed with a health issue. Um, typically, they're already, they've already been on a particular medical treatment for many years. Um, maybe they have a surgery that could be coming up in the future, and often they've heard about us, so they're just curious about how we can help them, or they're somebody who already is really knows the power of plants and herbs, and thinks that maybe new species would be an alternative to their medical treatment. And so people come to us on all different um, statuses with medication. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, Asin, if you don't mind just addressing some of those circumstances and, and how we handle them and how that works with new species or when doesn't it, or, you know, if, if that happens. Right, so first of all, um, new species does not advise any client or anyone to come off their medication. As long as your doctors have recommended that medication, we encourage you to stay on those medications. Now, medications are known to have side effects, and usually the drug companies, well, not usually, they're supposed to. They're legally uh, obligated to publish any side effects from these medication. And a lot of you might get the medication at the pharmacy and in a bottle that has sort of paper in there, you need to read it because usually those side effects are you know, on that uh, sheet of paper. Now, a lot of you may not be able to read that um, list uh, of side effects on, on, on the paper in the, in the bottle because it's fine print. The print is so fine, so you may have to go to the company's website or go to the FDA website and pull up the drug and you'll get you see what the side effects are so a lot of you who come to us at new species you're taking medication and you know one or two or three things are happening and there are other things as well but the main ones are the medication is not working you're taking medication for years and your blood pressure your diabetes is you know it's the same or getting worse or if you're taking it for other reasons, whether it's a pain or headaches, you're still you know, not getting better. Another reason is the side effects you get from the medication. A lot of you have really terrible side effects on medication. 
and you would go up to your doctors and your doctors would change the medication, but you still have side effects. Medication still not working, as I said before. And the third most common that you, that we see at New Species with, with our tens of thousands of clients over the years, we've been around for close to 20 years, so we've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. So the third is you are taking the medication and the doctor keep increasing the dosage of the medication or the doctors give you additional medication because the first medication or the first medications are not working. So those are the only options that the doctors have to increase the, the, the milligram or to give you more medication than we've taken. So we have clients who are taking two, three, four, five, six different medication for blood pressure alone. Right. Because the blood pressure is so bad, some doctors call the blood pressure volcanic. Uh, meaning that it is so bad, it is so high, you know, they don't know what to do with you. When nothing they do but makes it go down. Exactly. So so those are the main categories of the clients who come to us. And, and then there are people who come to us who just, they hate medication, right. you know, and... Well, some, some people are diagnosed borderline, which is this whole new category now that you can be borderline, you don't actually have the disease yet, but they're allowed to prescribe medication for it and so mm -hmm. some clients will say well I don't want to fill this prescription what can I do and so there's there's answers and ways that new species handles each of these situations separately and I will remember for us to get back to that we can talk about it after we answer Verona's question so Verona's question is what causes blood clots and she's also curious about what causes fibroids. She said, since today's International Women's Day, she'd like us to focus on these two things that a lot of women go through. Right. So let's, talk, let's begin with fibroids, uh, Verona. And that's a really great question because fibroid affect millions of women around the world. Unfortunately, it affects, you know, women who have dark brown black skin more than you know other women around the world and especially in the in the united states and the caribbean it is so common it devastates a lot of women and fibroids can lead to serious very serious health issues beyond just being anemic anemic mean that your red blood cells are low therefore you don't have enough iron in your body and because you don't have enough iron you don't have enough oxygen and guess what, Verona? The primary cause of cancer is the absence of adequate oxygen in anyone's body, whether it's a man or a woman. So that's how serious fibers are. So fibers are, are generally caused from, um, and, and many scientists and doctors differ, but generally it's uh, imbalance in hormones like estrogen, progesterone. So estrogen is the most powerful hormone we believe in a woman's body that's how powerful estrogen is so if the body is overproducing estrogen what's going to happen is that estrogen will pile up in the bloodstream now this is the danger of having too much estrogen estrogen causes cells to multiply rapidly especially sick cell so if you have um, any kind of inflammatory condition in your body, especially the uterus. It could be inside the uterus or outside the uterus. Um, usually when it's outside the uterus, it's uh, the doctors call it endometrium. Um, but inside the uterus, they usually call it fibroids. Um, so some scientists believe they're different. Some scientists believe fibroids and endometrium, you know, they're the same. But in the uterus, you, all you need is one bad cell, just one. And if you have high estrogen, estrogen is produced primarily by the ovaries. If you have high estrogen, that one bad cell, sick cell, inflamed cell, damaged cell, that one cell can become a fibroid as large as a six months old, six months old baby. Mm -hmm. Because the one cell keep multiplying over and over because of the high estrogen levels in, in, in the woman's body. And that's one of the major ways uh, women develop uh, fibroids. So if you have multiple sick cells, then you're going to have multiple fibroids. And at that point, um, Verona, a lot of women who do surgery for fibroids, you can speak with all of them. The fibroids always come back. And what they will tell you, they now have a fibroids form. 
meaning that they don't have, they remove one fibroid and now they have 15, 20, 30 fibroids returning. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when the doctors did the surgery or any interference in the uterus, they cause more sick cells and the estrogen is still high. And that's why a lot of women have multiple fibroids after they remove uh, that one fibroid. They have now have many fibroids and usually they grow within a year or two. So this is a classic um, example of what, what I always explain when I say about going to the root cause of the problem, which mm -hmm. is what new species does and treating the symptom which is what the entire medical industry is based around. And, and a lot of the natural supplement herbal remedy industry is also really based around treating symptoms. So some people will take cinnamon for their blood to lower their blood sugar, but they're not actually fixing the underlying inflammation and damage mm -hmm. in the body um, that's causing the body to not regulate blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. So the same thing, I, I always would explain to our clients that you know if you're in a boat and there's a hole in the boat and your boat is sinking, treating the symptom is to keep scooping out the water, but mm -hmm. the water is going to keep coming in, right? Uh, the true fix is to plug up the hole. And that's what New Species oh, is in your consultations with our naturopathic doctors or with Aston. This is all we ever talk about is what is the root cause of your health issue? Mm -hmm. And how can we encourage your body to fix it? Your body already knows what to do. There's no miracle here. Nothing New Species does is like, changing the your, essence your of how your is, body functions. Your body is the ultimate science lab. Your body already knows. New species is just providing the tool and your body is going to do the work. And so for everybody, the tools are different and how much work their body's ready to do and how long it's gonna take is different for everybody. So it's not that you shouldn't get surgery if you have fibroids because there are a lot of women whose blood count is so low that their life is in danger and because they're bleeding too heavily all month mm -hmm. and they have to get the surgery. You should always listen to your doctor if the doc your doctor is saying your life is in danger. But if you are at the early stages of fibroids or you know that they run in your family, there are a lot of things that you also can do in addition to what the medical industry does to empower your body to try to fix that. And New Species has seen this over and over again where it's perfectly possible that your body can, can correct it and help maybe help you avoid a surgery in the future. Um, so, and, and some, some women still, even if you get the surgery, we always say you haven't fixed the root cause of the problem. So ultimately what new species does is inevitable. Uh, you're going to need to fix the root cause of the problem, whether you choose surgery or not. So new species is not an alternative. It's truly just what you should already be doing. And then the medical industry, we're so lucky to have those interventions that can save our lives and, and help us when things have gone out of control. So if you have fibroids, please um, book your free appointment with our naturopathic doctors. Bring in any blood work that you have. Bring your sonograms, you know. Right, ultrasounds, it's whatever good, you it, have. Right, it's good to know the size of the fibroids to see how mature they are. And if you are, even if you're, you know, postmenopausal, uh, you should still come in and see us about your fibroids because a lot of women who, you know, fortunately for you, you know, all of you who are listening and who will listen, uh, to what we're saying, fortunately, we're telling you what we have seen, you know, in with our clients that we talk to, that we work with on a daily basis. This is not something we get from a magazine or a book or some, you know, some study that, you know, that's slanted. We're giving you the raw information as we have observed observe with our clients. So, so if you're postmenopausal and you have fibroids, you're still in danger because what happened is that those fibroids are no longer getting a lot of blood circulation mm. because now the hormonal imbalance is not, it's, it's different. Mm. So a lot of women, you know, they get um, a lot of uh, heat because of uh, their menopause. Mm -hmm. And so you know you have a different form of uh, hormonal imbalance if that's happening. But postmenopausal women who have fibroids, the fibroids get less um, blood circulation. So it's, like, it's very likely that you won't get any bigger. But what happens now because it has uh, less blood circulation, mm -hmm. the fibroid can now grow cyst because now the fibroid is really sick. And if you start to have a cyst and your fibroids are a lump and your fibroid, that's when fibroids can turn to cancer. And over the last 10 years, that new species, we're finding more and more women who are getting uh, fibroid cancer. It, it was virtually non-existent, mm. you know, before 10, 15 years ago. But I believe because of the foods that we eat are so bad, you know, ladies, you have to be, you have to watch your diets very carefully. 
whether you're opposed or premenopausal, you have to, if you have fibroids, you have to watch your diet very closely because diet is one of the primary reasons why the hormones will launch into imbalances, Jillian was saying. So the best, the best thing to do, the doctors have no treatment for fibroids but removal. There's no medication that, we're, that, that are known for fibroids but to, to do a surgery. If you don't want to do a surgery, um, sit down and talk with us. And let's help to change your lifestyle, your diet, and put you on the right path with a plan to fix it. And it's probably not going to be overnight. Some women get help very Corona quickly. Says, hashtag Queen Nanny. <laughs> Queen Nanny, and uh, yes, Queen Nanny. Queen Nanny is the number one. Yes, it's helpful. It's helped thousands of women. And the anti-inflammatory. Yes. Yeah. But mm -hmm. still, because everyone's situation is unique, and if you have fibroids and other health issues on top of that, there might be a different... Uh, combination of our formulas or lifestyle regimen that you would need to follow so that's why you need to have have the appointment with the naturopathic doctors right. to be sure um, so um, Sturton says hi hi Sturton thank you for joining us again this week uh, and did we uh, so uh, Olivia asked a question but um, also Verona did want to know about um, blood clots what causes them and I think it's interesting because she's relating this specifically to that it can be a common issue for women and I didn't know that there was any possible gender correlation with blood clots affecting women differently I don't know of any but Verona is right I have found more women new species women or clients who have blood cl blood clots more than men mm. and one of the re there are many causes of it, you know, Verona. Many, many causes of blood clot. One of the primary reasons is calcification. If there are certain chemicals um, like calcium that the body is not properly digesting, or if the person's body is very toxic and they get damaged cells, particularly in their legs. It's funny that a lot of the blood clots, you know, women get they get it in their legs and then they move up in the bloodstream up to their heart and it can cause a stroke or you know or heart attack or to their to their brain and cause a stroke. So blood clots are caused from calcification. So it, there there are many different types of calcification though. There are hundreds of different types of cal calcification. One of the most common is is cholesterol. Mm -hmm. If someone is overproducing cholesterol for many, many um, years and the cholesterol calcify gets hard you know, like the plaque that's in the blood vessels and it damages the blood vessels and it can lead to, it can lead to blood clot. Mm. So there are many, many reasons. And that's why people who have blood clots, they should, you know, they should really get their doctors to, to find out what's causing it. And that's one of the hardest thing to do is to find out the cause of any disease, even cancer. It's very hard to find the cause. And that goes to the point they made a while ago that, that's why we are here, new species. When someone comes to us, we help them to rebuild their whole body because in many cases, with, whether it's blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, tumor, cysts, it is virtually impossible to find what the cause is. And the reason why it's hard to find the cause, Verona, is because blood test results cover less than a quarter, less than a quarter of a percent of what could be going on in our bodies. Mm. So you could look at the blood blood test result and it's perfect. And this person have end stage four cancer mm. and the doctors don't know. So the insurance companies are not going to test for more because it costs too much money to test for more. And if we were to be able to test for 1% of all the things that could possibly go wrong in our bodies, uh, we, would, we would be paying maybe five times what we pay for insurance mm. oh, wow. right now. And, and, that really... and, and that's an incentive, <laughs> or it, it should be, you know, one of the motivation, I, 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 I right. should say, for people to really take care of themselves. Because, you know, a lot of people walk into hospitals and they drop dead in the emergency rooms or they die before they come out and they drove there. Mm -hmm. Because when they go there, you know, they're sick and the doctors don't know what's wrong. They do all these tests and they can't find what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So people <laughs> eat well exercise well, take care of yourselves. I always say to, to a lot of my clients, if it was possible for me to transplant what I have seen with clients, with, with our clients, with thousands of clients, 
into everyone's brain, I will be the happiest person in the world. <laughs> because what goes on out there is terrifying. Yeah, so we are, um, we're stuck with Facebook Live. Yes. <laughs> as the, as the, the conduit. For now. now. Yeah. And I think this, this goes back to another point that I always like to make, which, and it typically comes up around the topic of cancer, but I think it really goes for any disease. Diseases are a set of symptoms. And I, I always try to say that, like, with cancer, we focus on the tumor, right? So we say, that, like, the, the cancer is the tumor. But I always like to think of cancer, it's, it's not the tumor. The tumor is just one of the symptoms that we see and we combat. But cancer is really an environment that occurs in the body. I think any disease is a constellation of symptoms mm -hmm. that create an environment in our bodies. And that's why when clients come to us and they want a blood pressure formula or fibroid formula or cholesterol formula or cancer, there's no such thing as those things because these words are just a word that define a set of symptoms or condition in the body. And we just need to empower your body. We need to empower your blood circulation, your immune system, your digestion, and that's your, what we do. the energy and metabolism of your cells, the mitochondria. We need to empower all of these systems in the body, your hormones and everything to communicate right. and, mm -hmm. and work for you. So Verona, you just heard what Jillian said, right? All these things that we do to empower the body. So the queen nanny, oh, okay. that's what it does. The queen nanny or any of the formulas we have, that's what they do. They empower the body. So we could say the Queen Nanny is not for fibroids. It's not for hormonal imbalance, even though it helps thousands of women with fibroids and hormonal imbalance. It empowers the body to fix itself, to heal itself, to take care of itself, you know, particularly the women. And that's what the Queen Nanny is. Sorry to interrupt you, but, okay. but that's what our formulas are. So when you, when you come to us, with your blood pressure or your diabetes or fibroids or cancer, what you should be thinking, what do I need to do to empower my body to clean itself, to detoxify itself, to purify itself, to rebuild itself? To energize itself, to do all this work. Right. That is the foundation of new species right. and new species formulas. And that's why we have NDs and, you know, we have people who are certified to help you uh, to get to that level of good health so you can live better and live longer right um verona has a follow-up um thank you Aston. the blood clot situation is very scary i'm speaking on the topic because i went through it so i learned this once you are taking iron you should take vitamin c why do you think this is uh once you're taking iron you should be taking vitamin c because iron if you have too much iron in your body, the body is going to purge itself of vitamin C. It's like if your body has too much sodium, it's going to purge itself of magnesium. And that's why people who have high sodium or high chloride, they tend to have high blood pressure. So, so that goes uh, to the balance <laughs> of but minerals this... that people should have in their bodies. Because if you have too much of one, it overrides another and pushes it out of right, the body. Right, but the, see, Verona, this is like the most, the most perfect thing you could say, and it ties directly into what we were just saying. Everything in the body is connected. So treating mm -hmm. symptoms, like taking iron, right, so you're, you're just fulfilling a deficiency, and maybe that's necessary for periods of time to get certain deficiencies to, to regulate, mm -hmm. but to, to live your whole life managing your health by just – uh, chasing these symptoms, it's like a, a carrot at the end of a stick. So you take the iron and then it depletes your vitamin C. So then you need to take vitamin C. But if you have too much vitamin C, what else is going to happen? And before you know, you're just, you're just chasing these chain reactions all around your body because that's not how the body works. Right. And the food, this is why we use whole food plant ingredients in our formulas is because food, it, it is created by God the same way our bodies are. Every plant that we use has all of these vitamins and minerals and enzymes and coenzymes and phytonutrients and all these things that science hasn't even discovered that work together to make that plant do what it does. And this is why when people come in and say, well, do you sell CoQ10 and do you sell this and do you sell that? These are all highly processed things that have been removed from their original source and are being kind of used almost like a drug in a sense, because once you take it out of where it originally came from, it's, it's on its own. 
everything else that was there to tame it or make it what it does, it's now been isolated from that. And when you put it in the body, the body's like, oh wait, what is this? It's actually foreign to our body. So that's why new species, as much as, off, as often as possible, like probably 99.99% of the time, our ingredients are whole food plants. And if we do have to use any kind of isolated vitamins, it's only in conjunction with other whole food plants so that it can process and, and assimilate into your cells. So yes, if you're taking iron, do you need to take vitamin C if that's true? Sure. But we kind of, we recommend that if you're going to do anything like that, use it as a short term to get by from whatever the symptom might be, but know that ultimately the rebuilding of your body and long-term health. There's no substitute for that. There's no substitute no. for just treating your so body the as a just whole temporary, unit. All of those are just temporary supplementation that you should do to get back to the whole foods that you really need. So if and actually, our yellow dock we have we sell yellow dock extract, and yellow dock is a plant that um, is an is a great natural whole food source of iron, and mm -hmm. we've had a lot of clients successfully increase their iron levels with yellow dock. So you could get your iron without having to do it that and, way, and, that's a and, and then not have to worry about vitamin C. Right. And that's a natural source, you know, of iron. So um, your point, your point there, Verona, is is is, is really brilliant to illustrate that if you have too much of any, any chemical or mineral in your body, it's going to cause other problems. Now let's go back to medication. That is the reason why medication has such severe mm -hmm. side effects, because they're chemicals that the body can't use the way you know, we would love for them to work for our bodies, but they're chemicals that the body can't process. So they pile up in the bloodstream, in the bone marrow, and they lead to side effects and lead to other, you know, can lead to other serious health issues, including kidney damage, liver damage, all of that. We're not saying that medication is bad. People who are prescribed medication should take it because the doctors see that you have a need to avoid having a heart attack or a stroke or blood clot, you know, in terms of blood thinners. So you should take your medication, but what you should do, you should find a path to detox, cleanse, purify, rebuild your body so your body can work on its own to fix the issue that you're taking the medication for. And that is what every human being on the earth should be doing. And believe me, folks, there is no exception. That is, again, the foundation of new species. How can you detox, cleanse, and rebuild your body so your body can heal itself? So the bad news for you is that if anyone comes to us and they're looking for something for blood pressure, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is simply the, the pressure of the blood builds up because the blood is too thick or the blood vessels have shrunk. Well, wait, everybody has blood pressure. If you don't, you're dead. It's when it's high, <laughs> that's the problem. Actually, right? that's true. <laughs> it's and the if pressure you want of your blood that... against your arterial walls, which we all need to have, otherwise right. our blood is not pumping. <laughs> right, and if you don't have high blood pressure sometimes, you're gonna die, you're gonna die instantly. Let's say you run for one block and you're, <sighs> check your pressure. Right, your blood pressure is supposed to go up It's and gonna down. be elevated. Right, that's, that's not a problem, it's when it stays up and your body can't right. make it come back down is right. when you have a problem. Because the blood is too thick, or the blood vessels have shrunk, and it can't flow properly. So if you get blood pressure medication, it, has, it probably has a lot of nitric, nitric oxide, which is a form of nitrogen, plus other chemicals. You should take it, even with the side effects, because the doctors are saying if you don't take it, you could have a heart attack or a stroke. And let me tell you, folks, we work with a lot of people with stroke, and some of them are crippled for life. Some of them are partially crippled, they can't work anymore. Some people have heart attacks, the same thing, they're crippled for life. So what you should do is take your medication and then find a way to rebuild your body, clean your body of you know, uh, chemicals, toxins, inflammation. Uh, these are usually what lead to high blood pressure. And over time, your body will regulate itself. So. I would say that every disease is caused from some form of chronic malnutrition, for minerals, for vitamins, for enzymes, for amino acids, you know, whatever the body needs, it's not getting. Which is actually the basis of the name New Species, is why you created that name. Yes. And that's why it's spelled with an N-U for nutrition. Right. 
So, uh, um, a nutrition species. A nutrition species. We don't say that that enough. We don't talk about this at all, actually. Yeah. And it's it's the root of, of where all of this came from. And right. when I met Aston, he was telling me, and this was the statistic back then. I don't I don't even know what it is now, but it was um, Aston was saying that point eight percent of the human population dies of old age. Everyone else dies of disease. And that was uh, about 15 years ago. Yeah. Imagine what's happening now. And so Aston firmly believed that a lot of that was based on our lifestyle and lack of nutrition to support our bodies, to give them what they need. And uh, and so that's why he said, well, I want to make a new species. And if if we repair our genetic material and then have children and pass on that stronger genetic material to our children, we literally are creating a new species. <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy. At but least a better species. At least a species that may not die so predominantly of disease. Right. And we want to just keep spreading that message. Um, so, hi Rudy. Rudy joined us. Told him to ask a question if he has one. And oh, new for nutrition. <laughs> okay, yes, Verona, yep. I know, we don't talk about that enough. And Verona says she's drinking her beets right now. And she did take the yellow duck, so she's a new species in period. Good. She says. Good. We love it. Thank well, you, Verona. Well, keep it that way and live long and live healthy. Be one of our soldiers. We need people out there spreading this message. Whether you know, if they don't buy our products, whatever. You know, this information needs to get out there because too many people are suffering unnecessarily, and and it shouldn't be that way. Right. And and Asin, so you were saying before. Um, Another reason, a, a lot of the thinking behind when you create a new species in our first formula is that there are laws of chemistry and physics that govern all life. Everything, even non-life. Everything, Everything in the universe. And they fall apart when they go into imbalance, chemical imbalance. You have too much iron, you have too much nitrogen, you have too much oxygen. And by the way, uh, folks, I don't want to shock a lot of you who are listening and who will listen, but one of the primary issues that we human have, human beings have is, is uh, what they call oxides. They're, they're, they're extra oxygen molecules in our body because we have toxicity, we have inflammation, and that's what you know, leads to oxidative stress, and that's what's one of the primary causes. You can speak slower. <laughs> That's one of the primary really causes. Really complicated stuff you're saying. That's one of the primary <laughs> cause of uh, you know all these diseases we get in our bodies is oxygen actually going to thinking about the cycle. So oxygen should reaction. give life, but it can also it take takes it. life. Yes. yes, and that's why it's so important to keep the body balance. You know, cleanse. Right. But we, we have to rebuild. obey the laws of chemistry and physics. You can't. We, you, can't the, you cannot live outside of them. You can for a period of time, but then you're going to start to see the symptoms of your body saying, mm, that's not working. Oh, that's not working. Stop doing that, please. And what do we do? We just numb it with some Advil, right? We get a medication and we just cross our fingers. When really your body's saying, like, hey, just make a few adjustments and this will go away. Right. I was talking to uh, um, our massage therapist. So uh, her name is Megan. She's my massage therapist, but she's also going to be doing massage therapy for you guys. Starting in April. Starting in April. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, she, so we were. I was talking about some pain that I was having in my feet, and because I've I've gained some weight over the years, I thought it's just oh, I'm just heavier now, so of course my feet hurt. But she was like, no, that's just water. You just need to drink more water, and that'll go away. And I was like, what? I just need to drink more water. I'm over here thinking I have this condition I'm developing, and I'm worried. And and she said, it's just just drink more water, and, and that'll go away. And and so the, these are the things. Just live within the Simple rules things. of chemistry and Simple physics things. that govern everything in the universe, mm -hmm. and you will. Your body should stay regulated, and you should be healthy. So we just want our formulas, Aston designed our formulas based on those laws. That's why we're so strict about the herbs being raw, about them being whole foods, about the formulas being liquid, uh, about them being completely natural, not adding in any fillers or additives or preservatives. Um, and we follow all these rules strictly no matter how much it costs us, no matter how hard the work is to maintain, no matter how many new regulations the FDA gives us to follow, we do what we need to do because that's what we, we know is going to work. And we want it to work long term so that you rebuild your health and you stay healthy forever. So, so that's that with medication. Hi, and Ivor. By the way, Ivor White is here. I haven't uh, seen you in a while. Yeah, he comes by, but they're, they're all, they're all these clients, you know, they avoid me now. <laughs> And um, and I'm very angry at all of them. The lines are too long. The not, lines are too they long. They love you, but not that much. I know. <laughs> so, but it's, it's ha I'm happy to see them, on, you know, joining us uh, for a chat because this is what they're accustomed to. They're, they're accustomed oh. to getting the one-on-one -on -one that lasts forever. 
but now when they come to the office, they don't get it. So that's why they have, they have abandoned me. But they're still coming. But hopefully they go see the NDs and, and they're going to fall in love with Dr. Guy. They're going to fall in love with Dr. McDermott. Dr. Bowman, you're going to fall in love her. with Dr. Bowman. You will not be able to get away from that laugh she has. So uh, please get to know our, our naturopathic doctors. They really, really care. It's wonderful to have them here. And when I hear them talking to you and our clients on the phone and hearing the love and the nurturing care in their voices for you, it's just it just makes me feel so proud of the work that we do. So please get to know them. Mm -hmm. But um, so Sturgeon has a question. How important is vitamin D on a daily basis? Uh, so depends what we mean by vitamin D. <laughs> what source is it coming from? Right. So vitamin D is probably easily the more the most important uh, vitamin in the entire universe for human beings. And the reason why Sturgeon is because we, we, we we're supposed to have all human adults, you know, about 80 trillion blood cells. And every single one of those blood cells have what they call vitamin D receptors, meaning that they store vitamin D. So vitamin D is a cornerstone of the immune system and it's a cornerstone of the hormonal system. And this goes... This goes back to uh, you, Verona, as well. Uh, we have worked with tens of thousands of women and men over the, over the last you know, 15, 20 years. And every single one who has hormonal imbalance, have prostate issues, have uterine issues, the uterus, have ovarian issues, have breast issues, have all of these issues related to the endocrine system. Every single one has low vitamin D. What does that tell you, Stern? That the body will not function properly without vitamin D. And the best source is from the sun. And Because your body actually will produce it with simulation from the sun. That's so, really the best way to, to get vitamin D. So taking it every day means, yes, stimulating your body to create it every day for sure. So Jillian just underscored my point. Vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. Oh, right, so it's a hormone. It's a hormone. Our bodies are not capable of producing any vitamin. <laughs> so, so Olivia the, behind the camera is going. So the person, who, <laughs> the person who named vitamin D back in the 1940s or 50s, they probably didn't, you know, didn't have the scientific information that we have uh, that, that's, that's right, widely available now. So vitamin D is actually not a vitamin, it's a hormone. And it's produced, you know, by the cholesterol beneath our skin when we are exposed to the sunlight. The ultraviolet rays, just like photosynthesis with plants, when the sun hit plants, they produce all this mineral. That's what made them so so beautiful mm -hmm. and, and fruit so beautiful and tasty. Uh, those of you like me who love vegetables, so it's the same thing. You know, you get exposed to the sun, the ultraviolet rays in the sun interact with the cholesterol. Uh, the fat cells in, in, our, in our epidermis or below our epidermis, and that's how our bodies produce, you know, the chemical called uh, biochemical that called vitamin D. So vitamin D is critical for every body function, especially for the endocrine system, the prostate for men, for women, you know, the, the uterus, the ovaries, their, you know, just just overall women's health and men's health. It's critical. So what Sturton is saying, though, about taking it every day, which means he, I'm, I'm assuming he means supplementation. So there are people whose vitamin D gets very dangerously low, and the doctor is going to prescribe a very high dose, like 5,000 or 10,000 20, or 20,000 or 50,000. And you should, should take it. But you should take it short term. Short term. Because you should this can take become it. very toxic to the body. You should you ask take the doctor it until you don't need it anymore because you have responsibly uh, take, it up, take it upon yourself to get natural vitamin D from the sun or natural source of vitamin D, like our vitamin D, the new species vitamin D is fish oil, and it's the next best source of vitamin D that's known So not Earth. just fish oil, but cod liver oil. So we're using raw, wild-caught cod liver oil because the cod, again, they create the vitamin D as well, and it's, it's um, produced in their liver. So when you get the oil out of the cod's liver, you're getting the nutrients that the cod was also living on. And by keeping it raw, we're, we're preserving the, 
the potency and the, the nature, the chemical nature of that vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So just going and getting any cod liver oil is not going to suffice. Most of no. it is not even purely cod liver oil. It's not raw. It's not even completely natural. And, that will, and those will push up your cholesterol. It yes. Your cholesterol and if you the read room. the fine print on, on one of the most popular sites that a lot of our clients, especially from the Don't Caribbean, use, I won't say, but you want to get sued. Go read their website. I had to click for a long time to find the ingredients in it. And when I finally got to the bottom, I read the fine print and they said that it could possibly raise your blood pressure as well. So I would just be, do your research there. But the reason new species provides. Um, vitamin D, and we call it vitamin D and A because you actually are also getting vitamin A from the cod liver oil. And for those of us who are vegans and really don't want to consume um, fish or any kind of animal products, I, I understand that. But if your vitamin D is really low, you may need to do that for a period of time if you're not going to take the synthetic stuff or you really have no access to the sun. That's the best form that we have found so far. And to answer your question, if you don't take any vitamins, you should take vitamin D and get a good source of vitamin D because no human being will live for very long without having adequate vitamin D. And all those trillions of uh, blood cells that have vitamin D receptors, meaning the body store vitamin D. So when those receptors get empty, what happens certain? The body start going insane. Our organic, you know, in terms of organic chemistry, the body start going crazy, insane. The cells go insane because they're in a state of imbalance. And by the way, that's what insanity is. Insanity is, is a biochemical imbalance in the brain. With some of the brain and, neur uh, and neurons, the biochemical imbalance is what leads to insanity and other mental issues. So it's the same thing the cell goes through. If you don't have adequate vitamin D, and that's why... If it's happening on the outside visibly, it's happening somewhere microscopically also inside Absolutely. the body, right? And then it multiplies. Yeah. So for vitamin D, if you're on the synthetic kind because your doctor puts you on it for a short period of time, the very high dose stuff, fine, but you need to get off it. They will tell you at some point you need to go get an over-the-counter brand, and then, of course, we we do shamelessly say you should come get new species vitamin DNA. Um, so yeah, but you shouldn't just be getting a synthetic vitamin D on a daily basis. You'll notice that new species vitamin D that I use that you're getting out of the, the dose is much lower than what the synthetic kind will provide, but it's fine. We have seen no problem in people raising their levels because again, it's real. So where uh, Verona just asked, shouldn't vitamin D be taken with calcium? And this is that same thing again. If you're okay. using synthetic, um, supplements and you are chasing that carrot on the stick and you're chasing those symptoms around your body, yes, then you're going to also need to take calcium, then you might also need magnesium, and then down the rabbit hole you go. And the body will not properly but, utilize calcium without, without the vitamin D level in the body being high enough. And Verona, that goes back to your first question about, about um, blood clots. Vitamin D deficiency can lead to blood clots, mm. and because of the calcium, the calcification we just talked we, we talked we talked about in in the early part of our presentation. So that's how critical vitamin D is. People who have low levels of vitamin D will likely develop blood clots because they're going to have more. They're going to have less calcium being properly metabolized in their bodies, and it leads to calcification anywhere in the body, the brain, the eye, the liver, the lung, anywhere in the body you can have those calcification. And of course, you can have it in the blood vessels, and that's when it strips away from, you know, in, in the blood vessels, and that's what leads to the blood clot. So if you're using your species vitamin D, which is whole food, no, you don't then need to chase that, it's, go down that rabbit hole with all the other supplements. We do have a whole food calcium. It's, it comes from algae, so it's a vegan calcium, and you probably should be taking that anyway as well, but you don't have to take it because you're using the vitamin D. Um, we have a different question from Ivor. Mm -hmm. Ivor was asking about using honey. And is that okay? He likes to use it uh, in his tea. So honey generally is fine. I mean, it is sugar. So if you have diabetes or you have any concern, if your body is not processing or metabolizing sugar, then even though honey is a whole food, it may not be good for you at this time. So you should talk to our naturopathic doctors and see um, if you have a health condition that would restrict you from using honey. But for general purposes, um, honey, the standard honey, the, the, the clear, pretty looking honey you see on the shelf in most grocery stores is highly processed. So real honey. And those are not honey. 
They're not. At the that's end of the day, sugar. they're really not honey. Just yeah. sugar. Uh, that's why you can get like the the regular mm -hmm. brands of maple syrup, and it tastes really, really, really sugary. And then you can get the real maple syrup that came out of the tree, and it almost has like a extra layers of flavor, a little bitterness, a little all that stuff because it's a real food that came out of a tree and it hasn't been processed. Same thing with honey. So honey that's um, unprocessed is going to usually be more solid. It's not going to be clear. You won't you won't be able to see. It looks more white and uh, like a light yellow and you kind of have to like scoop it out of the jar and get it to melt into your tea so i recommend i can see Avar is shaking his head he's, you know he's thinking oh, i'm going to go to jamaica or the caribbean and get my or anywhere in the which caribbean would be and get awesome. my honey, yeah. which is the best thing to yeah. do yeah and you know you live in new york and there's a lot of beekeepers just a little bit further upstate and you can get locally oh, made honey island. maybe out in long island too yeah you could get locally made honey but even just at um like whole foods or any of the natural health food stores that might be in our area they probably have an unprocessed honey. Um, so if you're going to use honey, I do recommend that. And when I get home today, I could take a picture of the honey that I use and, uh, and post it on, on Facebook for you to see as well. Um, Sturton, thanks a lot. You're welcome, Sturton. Um, Verona was surprised about the vitamin D deficiencies leading to a blood clot. So good. I'm glad we got, she knows so much. So I'm glad there was something we could tell her <laughs> that she didn't know. Um, yeah, so there, let me just make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, uh, so I, I, we did miss Olivia's question. She was asking if we could talk a little bit and on the topic of Women's uh, International Women's Day today, if we could talk a little bit about yeast infections. Okay. So yeast... And maybe, maybe, because there's a lot you could say about that, but maybe the new species perspective, the side of it that a lot of women combating yeast infections who constantly are going to the doctor, getting the over-the-counter products, what might they be missing that's stopping them from fixing the problem? Well, um, I, I could, you know, keep it simple. Ladies, if you have yeast infections, you need to come off sugar. One. Hundred and ten percent. So for also at no least, honey, <laughs> even the, the non-processed kind. It doesn't matter if it's fruits or natural or an organic, and it's liquid. You got to stay away from sugar. Uh, the, the best way to get rid of yeast infection is to starve the yeast. Don't give them the sugar. You can, they can get it from even the, the natural organic fruits you eat uh, will make your yeast uh, situation get worse. So that's the best thing to do. Just come off sugar all together. Drink lots of water. Lots of water. Um, you probably won't be able to drink too much water to flush the system out while you're starving them. Good. That's it. For yeast. That's how yeah. I've helped, you know, all the women who have come to new species. So there's a free solution. Yeah. You know, save money too. Yeah. Um, Olivia, was there any follow-up on that that you might want this to be more specific about? I don't know. No. Um, how, I guess how, how it's produced other than the sugar, like what's going on in there why is the sugar making it so like, why could someone right I, could, I eat plenty of sugar obviously and <laughs> i don't have any you know yeast issues but like someone else like you could see like a really skinny person who you assume is really healthy and then they have chronic yeast problems why would that right so uh we, we we're almost out of time but yeast are are you know they're bacteria and we have good bacteria in our small and large intestines that help us with, with uh, digestion. And but if you have yeast, is because you you uh, th there's a buildup of the bad of, of the bad bacteria in the body. And and just so you all know, it's a really great question follow up question. Also, because Olivia's been using our only one, and that's helping her yeah. even without really cutting out the sugar. Right. Well. I was given the cheap way. Sorry. Well, right, the free way. Huh? Yeah. No, no sugar, just drink a glass of water. <laughs> but um, viruses and bacteria and germs, just to frame the, you know, uh, the question in, in a relatively scientific way, viruses, germs, bacteria, the foods that they eat are, are actually the minerals that we consume in our foods. I was responding to start. That's, sorry. that's what they eat. They eat the minerals, the iron, the magnesium, the vitamins, whatever we consume, they're parasites. Right, right. So sugar just happened to be like cancer. One of the people would say the favorite food of, of, of uh, cancer cells is sugar. It's not really necessarily true. What happened is that they, if you have a lot of sugar in the body or glucose in the body, it create a very acidic environment, and that's what cancer cells love. 
same thing that with yeast. Environment. So yeah. sugar is not a food. Sugar a is, is a carbon chemical. And if you have a lot of it in your digestive system, it can lead to not just yeast infection, it can lead to the overproduction of bacteria and viruses and, and germs and parasites. And you keep microbes, you keep naming it because sugar is not a food in any form. It's a chemical, it's a carbon form of chemical that causes a lot of toxicity. And that's why people who have diabetes give them enough time and they're gonna have high blood pressure because the toxicity of the glucose expunge uh, the uh, uh, magnesium from, from the bloodstream and sodium, and so the body can't use insulin properly. So a lot of people who, you know, who have diabetes or blood pressure, they would say they, they're married, those two diseases are married, and that's the reason. Mm. So germs, bacteria, viruses, micro, parasite, they feed on the very thing we eat, that's what they feed on, and people who have those, that's why they have these infections, because over time, they have an overproduction of these viruses, microbes, bacteria, um, parasites, and that's what leads to the infection. But everybody has bacteria. thousands and thousands yeah. of bacteria and viruses and microbes that, that, good, we, need. that we need. Yes. But when they become uh, too many and they become, you know, they, they, they interbreed with the bad ones that get oh. into our bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's why we have an overproduction of these bad bacteria, viruses, and microbes, and it leads to infection. So that's what digestive, all digestive issues are related to what I just said. If you have IBS, if you have colitis, if you have uh, any of those uh, health constipation, any of those are digestive issues is because of what I just stated. Okay. Um, so Sturton has a follow-up question that he heard about honey. He said, I heard if honey is used in hot or warm liquid, it becomes cancerous. Is that true? I've never heard that. I've never heard that. And certain that would make me just ask a lot more questions rather than having any answers. I want to know, again, I was making the difference between processed honey and unprocessed honey. So... Um, was the study done on processed honey? Was it on a specific brand? Um, what were the, were there like variables that they took into account? I mean, like I said, cancer is an environment in our body that is affected by, unfortunately, many, many, many factors like the air that we're breathing and the foods that we're eating, the toxins that are in their clothes after they're manufactured, that there is just there, the stuff in our water. There is so many things that can burden the body and ultimately lead to a cancer situation. I, I, I want to know how they would single out honey uh, in, in that case. And, and, and this is the question that we have to be careful about in general, even with the, the whole debate around genetically modified organisms or GMOs, there is a huge movement of people saying, well, it, they cause cancer if you consume genetically modified foods. But the, the, on the other side of the debate, they're saying, well, prove it. Prove that these genetically modified foods are causing cancer because mm -hmm. there are so many other things that are, cause cancer that are carcinogens. Um, and it's, it's really hard to weed out all those factors and then make a claim like that. So if you have the link or the article or whatever it is that you read, send it to me. I'd love and to I will do some it. research. Yeah. I'll do some research on that. But I, it think, doesn't sound I think it's highly um, unlikely, okay. improbable. Uh, if, if honey, especially we're talking about real honey. Right that the honeybee makes, and that's some concoction in the lab. Which is full of minerals, amazing nutrients. Minerals. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I'll do some research in that to see. You never know. Yeah. Because we don't know everything. Right. But it would help if you had that article or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, that would be good. Yeah. All right. Um, Verona claps her hands to that. Awesome. Sturton, I hope that helps. I don't think you should be afraid of putting honey in your, in your tea or uh, at this point in time. I'd be more afraid of probably if you eat meat or you eat you know, you consume dairy or you smoke or you, you know, go outside and breathe pollution. You know, I think those things are probably more concerning at this point in time. Um, all right. So I think we've answered everyone's questions. And we're out of time. And we are parched. Um, <laughs> this was so great, though. Thank you so much for all these questions. Wow. I, I just love it. And please. Uh, keep forwarding these links on to the people you know who you try to tell about new species and maybe you just rather us explain it for them. We'll be back on again on Sunday at 2 p.m. We're thinking maybe people after church 
or after your morning, your Sunday morning rituals in the afternoon, you could join us. And that's called in the Caribbean link or the Jamaica link. Yeah, so we're gonna be Aston's gonna be taking appointments in Jamaica mm -hmm. from Friday the twenty second to when to Tuesday the twenty sixth, mm -hmm. um, from twelve to five. So I keep banging my hand on the table, and Olivia's like, "Stop checking the computer." Um, and so Aston will be taking appointments between twelve p.m. and five p.m. Uh, so if you have any family in Jamaica, in the Montego Bay area or in the surrounding area of family and friends, if you want them to get a little heads up as to what new species does and is, then have them join our Facebook Live on Sunday at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. and we will be doing a more generic covering of what new species is and does and our products. And you can join as well. And please join as well and ask the questions. The products which we haven't done in years. So maybe you all should join as well. But thank you very much for joining. Right. Yes, and please download our app. This is our, our primary investment in time right now, is trying to make the New Species app be a primary source of, of important content for you. So um, Asin and I will be working harder at making more videos, and they will be exclusive to our app. My show, Scratch the Surface, about my journey and weight loss and my health goals is, is also on the app, and it's exclusive only for those of you who register on the app. So just downloading is enough you've got to create an account and if you're on Facebook now it means you have a Facebook app on your phone which means you just have to click the little Facebook login and you'll be able to be registered on our app you'll also get exclusive access to our promotions so we always do exclusive promotions on the app that aren't anywhere else um, or different versions of the promotions that might be publicly announced they're different on the app so please go there it's where we like to spoil our our new species and our and our loyal clients um, and also we have a daily update section now on the app so if for some reason one of our health centers has to close for the day we're going to put that up there so you can always go to the app and say all right what's going on at new species today or if you're heading over to the office quickly check it and see if, if the office you're going to might be closed for whatever reason um, so download the app, new, just type in the word new species, N-U species, one word, in your Google Play Store or on the um, Apple App Store. Mm -hmm. uh, and please interact with us there as well. Otherwise, keep telling people about our Facebook Live. We want to keep coming on and spreading the word and helping people get healthy um, through education and, and if through our products if they decide that's right for them. So thank you all. Thank you all. All right. We'll see you soon.